Today we will be speaking about 21st century education and our first guest speaker is Professor Emmanuel Pastrich, the director of the Asia Institute and an associate professor at Kyung Hee University. Professor Pastrich has earned his bachelor's degree at Yale University in Chinese and he has studied abroad in Taiwan National University, the University of Tokyo, and he has earned his PhD degrees in East Asian Studies at Harvard University. Professor Emmanuel Pastrich will be speaking to us about 21st century education and we will be asking Hello, Professor Pastrich. Can you give us your general opinion on 21st century education? So, of course, we're just starting the 21st century, uh, but I think that the, the overwhelming uh, important issue in education in the 21st century is the rapid development of technologies, which have, I think, exponentially expanded uh, for the potential for what education can be, but have also posed enormous challenges, both in terms of distractions for people, inability to focus on any one particular issue. And finally, education is challenging traditional, what they call uh, brick and mortar buildings. So brick and mortar being actual schools or school rooms are being challenged in various ways by these horizontal relationships through social networks, online learning, MOOC, massive online courses, uh, and so uh, we're facing enormous both challenges but also presented with enormous opportunities for what education might Professor, be. you have stated that the biggest challenge and opportunity for 21st century education is the technological developments and advancements. Right. And to tie that into Korea, Korea has faced a great development age from its prior war to today right. and it currently has the fastest internet connection right. and the largest social network in the web. Right. How do you think that ties in with Korean education? Right, so Korea is both has enormous potential in terms of education, the general level of education is one of the highest in the world uh, overall. I mean, that, that's to say, uh, there, are, there, there are no illiterate people in Korea. The, 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 the foundations are quite solid. Most people go to high school, if not college. Uh, internet is extremely uh, widely available. Uh, it has enormous potential. People uh, get a lot of information, maybe too much information every day. Uh, and so it has very strong foundations and it's making great efforts in universities to introduce internet-based education. Uh, that said, uh, there are tremendous uh, risks as well. Uh, Koreans, uh, because it's so internet savvy, they tend to get distracted easily, they don't focus on a book. People read many fewer books, as you know, than they did before. My own son he used to read more books two years ago than he does now, and I think that has a lot to do with the internet. So I think the key, there's enormous potential for Korea, but it requires us to uh, have some sort of regulation to it, to say we will use internet to read books, but we will not be distracted by instant messaging, or we'll create environments where you use the internet, and then you step away from it, and you have a discussion. It has to be regulated. And the same is true, you know, online education. If it's too easy, if you can watch it anytime you want, then you won't watch it at all, or you won't watch it seriously, or you'll watch it and you'll play a game, and it will be, of course, uh, counterproductive. So I think we have to have very strict sort of rules for how we uh, go about using technology in education. But if we follow the rules carefully, there's enormous potential to get, you know, learn from scholars around the world, uh, to interact with students from countries all over the world, online, have discussions, uh, and to have discussions like we're having now. Uh, as we're doing at Asian Institute, we're going to have a series, myself first, and then the uh, ambassador uh, from Great Britain, the British ambassador to Korea, and then we have a series of other famous scholars, Joseph Nye, for example, over the next uh, six months. So we're hoping in that Asian Institute series to open up this potential in education in Korea to actually have direct sort of dialogues with famous people, uh, distinguished scholars, etc. So basically, as technology evolves, um, some people say humanity subjects cannot shape the uh, society anymore uh, as the natural sciences and engineering do. Um, what's your opinion on this uh, claim and what do you think the future uh, focus of the humanity subjects should be? Right. Uh, so there has been a tendency in recent years, particularly in Korea, uh, to say that in this age, humanities, literature, 
uh, art, uh, philosophy, history is less important, and neither technology or economics is more important. And this, I mean, I'm at Kelly University, there's a famous, there's, a, I'm not, over the last five years, yeah. this rivalry between Chungang University, yeah. which took this rather extreme position that everybody should study um, accounting as undergraduate and be prepared <laughs> to work in a company, and Kelly was said, no, everybody has to take, like, you know, philosophy mm -hmm. as an undergraduate. So they, they, they became sort of like poles yeah. in education. Uh, personally, I think that humanities is absolutely essential mm -hmm. uh, to responding to uh, the challenges of rapid technological change. Uh, and it's in some ways more important than technological training or economics. Uh, because, and the reason for that is when you're trying to come up with solutions to unprecedented challenges, right? It requires a lot of imagination, understanding of how people have changed institutions in the past to be able to create something, uh, systems, uh, administrative approaches to deal with new environments. So, in fact, the response to rapid technological change, uh, the most important point is in a, in a sense in the philosophy uh, and the philosophy in the sense of understanding what is real, uh, what is good government, what is how should the world be run, how can we be fair, uh, literature in terms of how you know uh, what a text means, how do you interpret it, how, what the meaning of your words are and how they move other people. Very, very important in the internet age, obviously. Uh, art and aesthetics, the idea about how images or uh, symbols affect people. Also in an internet society, increasingly an important issue, right? So personally, I think the humanities is in a way even more important than it was before, but there's a lag. And it's sort of a simple, I mean, it's a simple way to think. You think, oh, well, technology is important, therefore, electrical engineering is going to be the most important thing. Uh, humanities, since technology is so important, is no, we can throw it away. It's, you don't need it anymore. Uh, but I think if you think about it a little bit more deeply, you realize it's, in fact, the opposite. In fact, the humanities, uh, in a rapidly changing environment, uh, you need the humanities to be able to create a response to new challenges.